Okay, on this screen we have a lot of numbers. So remember that this screen corresponds to the computational output for ethylene. In a previous video we said this molecule is going to have 12 electrons and uh, it's also going to have 12 molecular orbitals. And as we can see at the bottom, toward the bottom of the screen, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We did get 12 molecular orbitals in the output. Because we have 12 electrons, MO6 is our HOMO, our highest occupied molecular orbital, and MO7 is our LUMO. So we want to key in On this orbital, this is our highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO, and this orbital. So when we think of, I mean, that's great. So we did this output. We can circle our HOMO and LUMO. Are we done? What is the take-home message of this? Well, let's look carefully at what's happening in our HOMO and LUMO according to the calculations. If you notice, in our HOMO and the LUMO, there are a lot of zeros in these columns, except for these two rows. Now, what's so special about those two rows? If we look all the way to the left, da, 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 Ooh, okay. So that row corresponds to the PX orbital on carbon-1, and this row corresponds to the px on carbon two. Okay, what, what what are those? So if I go up to the top of the screen and I draw two carbons, <clears throat> and let's say these are the px orbitals, what it's saying is the highest occupied molecular orbital is an overlap between these two p orbitals and no other orbitals. How do I know no other orbitals are involved? Because every other row in the, the HOMO column, they're all zeros. So nothing else is part of that picture. So all, all, the, all the contributions to that orbital come from these PXs. Now, if you go look, look at the LUMO, it looks identical, except for one important feature. In the LUMO, one of the numbers has a negative sign in front of it. Now remember, molecular orbitals, the negative sign doesn't mean it has a negative charge, it means it has a mathematical negative sign because these are simply sine waves. So I'm gonna look at this. So this is our HOMO that I've drawn up here. And I'm gonna shade half of these orbitals because P orbitals have a mathematical sign. And so these shaded ends can interact and the unshaded ends interact. So that's our LUMO. And what's going on with our, I'm sorry, that's our HOMO. Here's our LUMO. The LUMO has flip signs, so let's draw the left carbon the same, shaded, but the, the, the next one has a negative sign, so it's just going to be flipped upside down. It's the inverse. It's the negative of that. So this is what our HOMO and LUMO look like. Now, there is no interaction between the, the, the on top we have a shaded end and an unshaded end. We don't get an interaction there. So actually we get kind of this, this node between the two because there's no overlap like we saw with the HOMO. Well, if you remember back to the very early days of organic chemistry, this is exactly what we drew for our pi bonding orbital. And the LUMO looks exactly what we drew for the pi star. So this is the, uh, this computational chemistry has driven us to look at the HOMO and the LUMO. And what have we found? The HOMO and LUMO are, 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 are our pi and pi star orbitals. And this makes sense. So when we think of ethylene, ethylene is a weak nucleophile. And what's the weak nucleophile? It's the pi bond. This CC pi bond that we have drawn here, kind of to the right of the middle of the screen. So it's this is the HOMO. X is a weak nucleophile. So what is the HOMO orbital? It's the pi bond. When we know that, it's a weak nucleophile. The pi bond attacks things. So, you know, we could react this with... I don't know, we could react with a proton, with H3O+. And the electrons for that reaction would come out of the pi bond. And MO theory, FMO theory, frontier molecular orbital theory, predicts that. This is our HOMO. So we can use these calculations to get orbitals, and these orbitals 
explain the reactivity, and as it turns out, everything we've learned confirms this. So everything's consistent. It's just a different computational way to get to that exact same answer.